Hello, my name is Paul Priestley. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Paul Priestley Art. Today we're going to be looking at how to draw a pair of scissors. Yes, and we're going to be looking at how to get these curves right, how to get the shapes right. I'm going to show you everything. So, let's make a start. Come on! Okay, before we start, we need to get the proportions right. So measure the thing with your fingers. You see the handles are about the same length as the blade. So if we make a little mark here, make a little mark there, that's the distance. So make another distance there. And you see, I've now got the length of the pair of scissors. Just put a few of the little marks on. Now, I would do a lot of this. Um, you can see here, you're not going to see it because I'm drawing this very lightly and you should do the same. But you see I'm drawing the curve of that area there, the curve of this, and I would continue doing that until I got the basic shapes very, very lightly and then check it. If you want to know a bit more about measuring, have a look at my video. Now, I'm going to start with using an HB pencil and a 2B pencil, and later I'll use a 4B to add a bit more um, <clears throat> light and shade to the piece. Now, all I'm going to do is to go around my little sketch that I've already made, so I'm just sketching over that, and as I'm doing so, I'm trying to use my wrist to get the curves. You see how I'm moving my wrist around to get the curves that makes things work nicely always try to use your wrist if you're drawing curves use the wrist we're going to draw the whole thing as though we're simply looking down on it as a flat shape now we're going to put the three-dimensional eff uh, effect on later on but for the moment we're just going to concentrate on creating the basic proportions getting everything right and making sure we're just viewing it as though we're viewing it from above okay so we're just drawing the simple basic outline that's all we're doing okay now the picture I've got in the top left hand corner is slightly different from the one that I work from but you'll see it gives you an idea of what we're doing Okay, so we're drawing the flat shape. You can see here I'm measuring again just to make sure I've got that correct. You remember the handles were exactly the same length as the blade. So I put that in and I'm now just sketching the blade down to get the main blade there and then the one that comes underneath. Okay, just doing that little line there for the um, blade itself, the thickness of the blade. Okay, so we've, we're approaching now the basic shapes of our scissors. So we've got that completed, which is fairly straightforward. Now, this is the interesting bit. We're going to decide how thick the handle should be. Notice I'm drawing a series of vertical lines. They've got to be vertical. Okay, each line exactly the same length. And we put them all the way around these circular sections. Okay, so... All vertical, all the same length. Then we can simply go around them and you can see how we begin to make this thing look three-dimensional. See, it works every time. But it's crucial that you make sure that all those little lines that you draw are vertical and that they are the same length. You see, we do the same thing around here as well. Just going around... You can draw them. You don't need to measure them. You can draw them. Use your eyes. Okay, we've done the same thing here. I can simply draw around them. But remember, vertical, same length. Crucially important, you see? And we can now you'll notice how this uh, handle now is looking much more three-dimensional. It's very hasn't got any rounded edges or anything like that But we've got the basic shape and this is what you should do with any drawing get the basic shapes and proportions right first Then move on to all the detail the fancy bits the shading and everything else So we're checking now for accuracy the size of the piece and so on I'm moving to a different pencil now, my 2B pencil, and I'm just going to round off some of these edges. You see what I'm doing there? Just rounding them off a little bit. And once I've done that, I'll then start the shading. So I'm just going over this. I wouldn't necessarily do this on a real drawing. I'm just doing this so that you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, we've decided where the light is coming from, so therefore the inside of 
the handle here is going to be in shadow. Now we're basing it on the photograph, but as I say, the photograph is not the exact angle I was looking at. So um, it's just there as reference. Now, inside here is going to be darker. If you press on lighter and lighter with your pencil, you see you get lighter and lighter tones. It's all to do with the pressure you put on with the pencil. So I'm pressing on really hard here, as you can see, and I'm now sharpening that edge. And you see how that shading now creates an edge and not an outline. And that makes the whole piece look a little bit more interesting as a drawing. So in this particular drawing, you're going to end up with a contrast between edges and outlines rather than just outlines everywhere. So sometimes try to use your shading to disguise the outline, to get rid of the outline. You notice here I'm varying the pressure I put on my pencil so it gets light around there and then dark as we come inside here. Okay, we do the same thing here. Lighter to start with because that's going to be slightly lighter and it will get darker as we go round to the right hand side here. You see as I'm doing. So it's getting much, much darker as it comes across. And it's all done by varying the pressure of your pencil. The more you practice that and the more you can vary the pressure on your pencil, the greater the range of tones you're going to create. And you can do this with any pencil. I get so many people writing to me saying, oh, I've only got one pencil, what am I going to do? Well, you vary the pressure you put on the pencil. It's simple, you know. Um, people haven't, some people haven't got everything that they require. And being a creative artist is making use of what you've got. Don't make excuses. Okay, end of story. Now, um, back to the plot. You can see here, the shading's going on here and it's beginning, now the handles at least are beginning to look much more three-dimensional. A little bit of uh, shading down the blade there just to get the edge of that particular blade and the other one too. Okay, a little bit of shading around here on the button in the centre and so on. So we're looking now to just add a little bit of shading to this. Now, in this particular case, the shading is not the important part of this particular drawing. Um, I wanted to talk much more about the shape and proportions. You'll notice I've changed pencil. You'll notice I've got a really sharp um, point to my pencil. I've done that by using a knife. This is a 4B pencil and I'm now using it on its side as I would do perhaps with a piece of graphite. Now this produces a much softer edge. So as I'm putting the shadow around here, and I'm just suggesting shadow, you notice it's applied very very lightly and it's got a nice soft edge to it because I'm using the side of the pencil not the point. And that's important. Use the side of the pencil, not the point. Okay, I'm putting a little bit more shading up on the side here as well. And we'll add a little bit more shading onto the actual handles themselves as well. Uh, a little bit of shading in here. And then in a moment, I'm going to start just darkening one or two shadows. If you've got a sharp edge, you can soften it by using this type of shading. You see, you can just go over the edge and just soften it slightly and that will help to make it a little bit more effective. Okay, now I'm just putting a little bit of shadow just on the blades themselves. This section here particularly you'll notice has got a, a slight curve to the blade as it comes down there. There we go. Now, I'm using the point of the 4B pencil now just to emphasise some of the shadow. So I'm just going to darken it. So don't forget, when, when you're in the middle of a drawing like this, always keep looking, you know, looking, comparing and contrasting. Is this bit lighter or darker than that bit? You need to check these things because the more you do it, the more accurate your drawing will be and the better it will be eventually. So it's really up to you. It's about how much effort you're willing to put into the drawing. OK, we're just coming to the final parts here. I'm not going to do too much more to this now. Um, just a few, a little bit more shading here and there, and then just to, to finish this off. All right, I hope you've been able to follow this, and I hope you produce a really brilliant drawing. I'm sure you have. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the video and learned something about how to draw a pair of scissors. If you have, then please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the little black bell as well so that you can be informed when I produce my next video. If you would like to support the making of these videos, then please check out my Patreon channel where you'll find lots of interesting rewards in middle in return for your patronage. That would be wonderful. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.